Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel and to a new series. In this series we are going to cover Swift UI, the new framework developed by Apple that is going to change how we iOS developer are coding frontend forever, for the better. In this series, especially in this episode right here, we are going to learn how to build Swift UI apps, but most specifically we are going to create a new project and wipe everything out of it so we can recreate everything to understand how to define an entry point of our app, how to create views and how to trigger the fancy canvas next to our views so we can see what our code would actually end up looking like and then also how to configure uh, the view that should be launched when our app is launching initially. So let's dive right into it and before we, before we do that, the requirement for this episode and series is to have macOS Catalina installed and Xcode 11 beta. If you haven't already, check out the description box. I have put in a link to an article that shows you how to do that on a second partition so you don't harm your production OS. That being said, let's dive right into it by opening up Xcode beta and creating a new project. We choose single view app and are going to call it Pokem Dex, like that. Make sure use Swift UI is checked. Clicking next, choosing desktop to create the project over here. And let's align the editor like this, or maybe even like this. So when we create a new project, we will be presented with only three Swift files, app delegate, scene delegate, and content view. Let's go ahead and delete content view and inside app delegate remove the whole body of this class. None of that is actually needed. We can remove it like this and inside Swift UI we can close that to say editor only. Inside uh, scene delegate we can say well we delete the whole body of the scene function. We need the scene function later on but all the other functions aren't needed either. So let's make the spacing a little bit nicer. All right, we ended up having only two Swift files. One is just the class definition and one is just the scene delegate. Now, uh, when we run our app and select iPhone XR, for example, our app will launch. Let's make it a little bit larger, but our app will display a black screen. That is because First of all, we didn't do anything wrong and we didn't break anything, so everything just works. But second of all, we haven't created any view to be displayed, right? That's why it's showing a black screen. Let's do that. Let's fix that. Let's create our first view, our first Swift UI view. Make a new file and on purpose select Swift file so we can create a Swift UI view, uh, view ourselves. Once you know how everything works, you can just use Swift UI view to circumvent the boilerplate code. Now let's call it Pokemon view like that, create and import Swift UI. With Swift UI, we have a lot of protocols exposed to us that are, uh, one of those are view. And view is the protocol that we need to use in order to represent a view you, we want to display in our app. So let's define a struct that is going to be a view and let's call it Pokemon view, just as the file name and conform to the protocol view. This view protocol has only one single requirement and that is having a computed property called body that is returning some view and we will explain in a second what this all, all of that means and inside here we are returning any view we want and I'm choosing text here because Swift UI provides you with a lot of views. So let's just use Charmander as a text here and so some this keyword comes with Swift 5.1 and it basically means that whatever you're returning inside the closure or function is, it could be anything, but it has to at least conform to view, right? So it has to be at least some kind of view. And text does conform to view and that's why we can return the type text that is conforming to view. We could also return another view that is provided by Swift UI. Uh, I don't know, for example, text field, which is a type text field, but it's also conforming to view. So we have two different types, text and text field, yet we can both return it inside here because it's both are of some kind of view. So that, that is that. And we are not using return key here, the keyword return here, because also with Swift, Swift 5.1, we can just like omit the keyword return and the last line of a function or closure is going to be returned automatically. So we are actually saving some code. All right, we got our first view. That's it. That's really it. 
it's all it needs. Now how to trigger a canvas next to our code to see how this view would actually look like. A side note, a view can be from a whole view of an app to something as small as just a small text element, right? It could also just be a an profile image circle that you want to reuse everywhere. And, uh, and so right here we have a whole view that is having a text in the center. And in order to trigger the canvas next to us, let's just open editor and canvas. And uh, you can see if we click resume, nothing really happens because we don't have anything that tells Xcode, well, here's something we want to preview and a canvas for. In order to do that, or in order to tell Xcode we want something like that is, uh, by defining a new struct, could also be a class, but struct is best practice here. And let's call this struct uh, Pokemon, Pokemon view and then underscore previews. And that is just a convention. You can really name it whatever you want. It's just another struct, right? Nothing special. However, since we want to use that struct to preview the view that we have created inside Xcode, we want to preview that view here. We just call it the same as the view plus underscore preview. So we know, hey, this is not our view. This is just the preview that makes it possible for us to view or preview our view. You get the point. However, uh, next is we have to conform to preview provider. And this is the magic. So Xcode, if you look up the documentation, it says that Xcode is statically discovering all types, all of them that are conforming to preview provider and they will therefore create a canvas next to it, showing whatever is returned uh, by the computed property of that uh, preview provider. And so this preview provider protocol has one requirement, and that is having a static computed property called previews that is also returning some view. And inside here we are returning, we will return our Pokemon view, right? An instance of our Pokemon view. Now, when we click resume, we should be able to see a canvas showing our view here as a preview. Let's have a look. There we go. It shows Charmander. We can use a trackpad to zoom a little bit out. So it shows Charmander. And again, we can make it even a little bit smaller. So we have it in one line, all of that. Preview provider is statically discovered and therefore Xcode will create a canvas. That means we can actually create another struct. We can copy and paste that and name this new struct whatever, because again, I said it is, it can be whatever. And then uh, let's use, we can even reuse Pokemon view again, right? And then say resume. So we have two types that are conforming to preview provider. And for each one, Xcode will discover that and will provide a canvas next to it. So this is the whatever preview. And this is the Pokemon view previews. And we have two canvas. Now we can even say, since Pokemon view is a view, right? And you've also learned that text is a view and there are a lot of more views. So you can actually just for fun say, well, I don't want to preview my Pokemon. I just want to for fun see in the canvas uh, something. And you can see not only is it hot reloading, right? Which is pretty awesome, but also that whatever is showing something and Pokemon view pre previews is showing Charmander, right? Because this one returns this view and this one just returns the text view. So that is that. And um, let's go and make this one our first view when we launch the app. Because just because we created that view does not mean that this is going to be automatically used as the first view to be shown when we launch the app, right? So let's try and rerun the app and see that this is actually the case. We are still having a black screen. Now, in order to fix that, we can go, oh, let's move that file over here. Just so we have all the Swift files next to each other. In order to fix that, we can go to scene delegate and close the edit or switch to editor only. And inside the scene function, we are going to initiate a new UI window and assign it to that property. So window is going to be a new instance of UI window and we are passing in a frame that is exactly the same size as our phone. And to get the size of our phone, we can just access it by calling UI screen main dot bounce. Now we got a UI window. Now we can say, hey, window, your root view controller is going to be a view controller that is capable of holding a Swift UI view. There is a new view controller that is called UI hosting controller. That is having an initiator that is um, expecting a root view. And we can tell, well, our Pokemon view is our root view. Now we got that assigned. 
And we can say window make key invisible, basically saying, hey, this window is the key window we want to have for our app to look like when you launch it, this is the window to look at our app through and also make it visible. If we rerun the app now, it will actually show our Charmander as the first view. So how question, how does Xcode know to ask the scene delegate to for this uh, for the first window and root view controller and view? Well, this is defined in the info.p list. If we go to application scene manifest and expand everything to the very bottom, you can see delegate class name. And on the right side, you see scene delegate. This is the name Xcode will look for as uh, it will look for that class and then ask this class for the information for the root view controller, actually window, root view controller and view. That means if we change that cl la class Xcode should look for to Martin Lasik, for example, and run the app, well, it will go and look for that class, not find it. Therefore, we'll not have a window root view controller and view to show and our screen is black again. We can fix that to go to scene delegate and actually say, hmm, let's call this name, uh, let's call this class Martin Lasik instead. We run the app and we see it works again. So this is the connection and this is the episode. If you have learned at least one thing, you can help me out by hitting like. If you want to learn even more about SwiftUI, there are a lot of tutorials coming up in the next few days, so hit subscribe to not miss out on them. Leave a comment if you have any kind of feedback. I'm happy to answer all of your questions. Check out the description box for the merch and also to uh, support me on Patreon to do YouTube full-time. I hope I see you in the next episode. Bye.